Okay, so this is a very special video that we're going to make today. Uh, one of the most successful students that I've had, Sana, uh, I posted her results last week. Uh, she got 8.5 overall, and we got a huge response of, from people who wanted to know, get more information about her, wanted to for me to share her story a little bit more. So we're going to do a video with her today, and she's going to... Um, help you guys with some advice on how maybe not get 8.5 but you know help you reach your goals and um, so sana can you first of all just introduce yourself to people and give a little bit of background information um, about yourself yeah of course well my name is sana and i'm a medical student i recently graduated i finished my medical school and in order to set my medical exams i was supposed to do the ielts exam because my primary medical qualification is not from the UK, so I was supposed to say it, and that's why, yeah. Excellent. And can you tell people just a, a brief uh, story about your IELTS journey? About like, uh, so people know that you got eight point five overall, but you know, how many times did you do the test? Uh, some things like that. Yeah. Well, um, this one was my second attempt. I did the last one. In July, yeah. And then what happened was like, I didn't get the scores that I needed. I basically needed 7.5 each, each of the sections and also overall. Uh, but the part that really I really struggled with was the writing part. And that's why I came to you for help. Excellent. So what we're going to do is something slightly different today. Um, on my page, I told people that I was interviewing you and did they have any questions for you? So I have like the top, the most, the five most popular questions. Okay. And so we're going to do that first. So the first question was a really, really important question. And um, I think, how did you identify your weaknesses? Well, I think it was just natural. I just, Whenever I'm doing something, I just know, like, you know, because my whole purpose is, like, you know, to improve myself in whatever I'm doing. So, else was no different anyway. So, what happened was, like, I exactly knew that, and after the school especially, I knew that the writing part was the one that I was struggling with. And in the listening, for example, I knew that I'm going to get a 7.5 the last time that I got. That was the score. And I missed six of the questions, and that was everything to do with the map. So obviously I knew that the map was the area. In the reading, well, I was kind of confident. Last time I got an eight, so I was I was okay with that. Um, then speaking, yeah, I knew that the 7.5 I got wasn't really reflective of my true ability because I got really nervous in the exam and I just messed it up. So I knew, and in the writing, I obviously knew because of the score that I got that I'm not up to the mark. Because I got a 6.5 when I needed a 7.5. So I just knew everything exactly where I'm, where I'm short. Yeah. yeah. So so I, because you were my student, I was able to help you identify your weaknesses in writing. Yeah. But yeah. maybe for a student who either doesn't have access to a teacher or doesn't have the money for a teacher or just lives somewhere without any IELTS schools or something like that, how could they identify their mistakes in writing? I think this question is very subjective because it really differs from person to person. Every person has a different way of like identifying their weak areas. But the best thing they can do is obviously regarding the aisles that like, you know, they can just practice, practice with the official material. And that really helps because when you do that, obviously you will know like which areas you're falling short of. Like, you know, and if you have sat the world exam before once, twice, thrice, you definitely know because the scores are reflective of your ability. Mm -hmm. So obviously I knew, like in the listening part, for example, I knew that like the maps was the thing that I was really struggling with uh, because when it came in the exam, I got all six of them wrong. So if you subtract six from 40, obviously it's 34 and it's a 7.5. So you just know because you practice and you practice mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. the next question was, uh, just how do you boost your general level of English? Because one big misconception is you can just learn lots of IELTS skills and tricks and tips and things like that. But at the end of the day, IELTS is an English exam. So to get 8.5, you need a certain level of English. How did you get to such a high level of English? 
Okay, I'm gonna be very honest here, because yeah. I know there <laughs> there are many people watching this. But yeah, um, I totally understood that it's just not about the IELTS techniques, and it's just not about the IELTS. It's an exam of your general level of English. So I I read every day. I don't like reading. All I love reading books is like medical books. Okay, I, I'm generally not into reading. Definitely not. But for the purpose of the IELTS exam, obviously I had to because I knew I I had to. So I was reading every day. Every day I'll read some article, uh, and I'll just read online because I'm always on the net anyway. So I was reading every day, and then I will note down the words. But I I followed a hundred percent rule. I didn't memorize a list of the words for sure. So I was re- I made a copy. I still have it actually. So I was writing down the word, then I was writing the antonyms, synonyms, um, the qualifications. That was really important. I used an online dictionary for that, and it was really helpful. So by the end of everything, I had a huge book with a lot of vocabulary that I could use in the exam. And also, secondly, I think it was it's something to do with my school as well because I have been taught in English all my life, mm-hmm. and the school that I studied in. Um, the country where I was born in, I, was, I studied in a school called Convent of Jesus and Mary, and there, um, the f- teachers like you know we were taught by nuns and other teachers, and they used to come from the UK and the Spain and everything, and we were fine if we spoke in the national language and not in English. Okay. So it was yes, it was always stressed, and I am very grateful for that. Yeah. Like you know, it really helped me. Yeah, so, so yeah. I, I think for anybody wanting to just do what you did, surround yourself with English, which could yeah. mean reading every day or listening every day, yeah. speaking to people, just do whatever you can in yeah, English. Yeah, and I listened as a well, lot as well, actually, to be honest, because I love watching documentaries uh, regarding human trafficking and prostitution and stuff like that. I'm just interested in those topics, mm-hmm. like, you know, the things that affect socially, like, you know, yeah. everybody. Like, so, like, you know, I would watch a lot of documentaries. I love documentaries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... so yeah. Choose something that you're interested in. Like it doesn't have to Definitely. be. It doesn't have to be like an academic book. No, of course. I mean, if we were, if I was choosing an academic thing, I would definitely choose something related to medicine only. <laughs> but yeah. I'm also interested in all these kind of things. So yeah, yeah. I chose documentaries. For yeah, I mean, you you could watch cartoons in English. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's maybe an extreme example, but you know, uh, it, but it just show show the point yeah, I'm making that's is true. that's true. Do whatever you enjoy in English, and that's going to help you. Basically, just surround yourself with English. Read, yeah. listen, write, do everything you can. That's the only way. Okay, so the next question was, this is a really popular question, but I don't think that the answer is going to help a huge number of people because it okay. is so subjective. But how yeah. much time did it take you to get to that score? Okay, as you already said, it's very subjective, so it differs. But for me, it took around a month yes exactly a month actually not even a month because it was exactly 28 days yeah. mm-hmm. but the, the, the for everybody else it might take you know it could take some people no, a week it could take some people six months it could take some people a year definitely because thing is like as i already said my level my general level of english wasn't bad i mean last time i got in the other parts if you take out the writing part including that one i got 7.5 and 8 which is obviously much higher level of English, but mm-hmm. still, you know, you need to improve. You can't just stay static and like, you know, just think that everything is going to be fine because what people do, I think, is because like they, they keep on repeating the test thinking, okay, I didn't do well this time. Maybe the next time the paper is going to be easy or something like, you know, it's not going to change. If you don't put in the effort, the results are going to be the same. So mm-hmm. the choice is yours. Excellent advice. All right. So the next question, um, how do you write the perfect essay? <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm laughing because there is no perfect essay. Um, anyways, but um, the point is, for me, I just follow the structure that you gave. Um, but I won't lie because not completely because I, I was still running out of time. So in the introduction, I, like, you know, I, kinda, I thought, like, you know, I'm running out of time. What do I do? I had to make a choice. Either write or write the perfect introduction, okay? Or I just like, you know, uh, spend more time on the supporting paragraphs. 
Mm-hmm. So instead of doing that, I chose to spend more time on the supporting paragraphs, mm-hmm. and it actually worked. But I think the structures that you give are really helpful mm-hmm. because then you don't have to go into the exam and think, okay, what do I write next? Okay, what's going to be the next thing that I have to focus? And also, I'm going to say, like you know, plan. Planning is very important. I know it's a crucial step that many students just skip. because they think okay we have just got 40 minutes you know like you know and we have we got to do everything in these 40 minutes but that's the wrong approach so as you always say in your course as well like you know planning is crucial not just for us for everything in life to be honest yeah it's it's so, no coincidence that every single student that i've interviewed like this they're they all say planning is it was crucial yeah, to them yeah it is the crucial part but i think the the main point in reaction to that question is there's no such thing as a perfect no. essay a lot of people are you know jumping from website to website from ielts book to ielts book trying to find the perfect structure or anything like it doesn't exist that, there's that, no that doesn't that exist of course yeah, yeah. you're right so r- writing the the best essay that you can the most effective essay that you can is what your goal should be not trying to find you know someone who will teach you the perfect essay because it's it's not a mathematics question <laughs> well um, it doesn't exist so yeah. if some t- teacher is doing that i'm i think it's just yeah. a bogus or something yeah so the next question that people wanted to know from you and i think you'll have a good answer to this because i spoke to you the day before <laughs> the test and the day before your results and you were very stressed out yes so how did you cope with stress Well, I was very stressed firstly because it was the second attempt. Okay, now I don't want to like you know sound negative or something. I know there are many people who have done it like 13 times, 14 times and thumbs up to them. <laughs> But I think it's like for me it was it was a setback for me because I couldn't believe like you know that I mean, I've said it in English all my life and I've said it in the best schools and everything and like you know how come I couldn't clear it. but i think ielts is a little bit different than other exams like you know um, you do need the professional help like you know and sometimes what people do is like you know they think oh it's just an english exam anyway like you know i'll pass so i think it's really important to get the professional help um that you can and with the stress part you know like it really depends like you know it first from person to person but at the end of the day i just stopped thinking about it <laughs> like you know i remember um because i remembered word to word what what i actually wrote in the exam in the actual exam so i remember emailing you as well with the whole essay and asking you oh can you please give me the feedback can you tell me how my ideas are how i've presented and everything okay and i did the same on in the group as well in the uh, private group and then like you know some people were saying it's really good some were saying oh no you could have done this that, that like you know and it was just like absolutely like you know i was like yeah. okay i can't take it so i i just like you know deleted that post um yeah. okay very, in the exam with what other students tell you uh, <laughs> because it's normally not 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 some of it is very very good advice but some of it is Mm. Yeah so you told me not to worry so after that after hearing your advice like you know I acted on it and like you know I just deleted the comment uh, but yeah uh, what I did in the exam like you know I thought because I messed it up last time because of getting nervous i mean like obviously the 7.5 was not like it was not my real mark i was pretty sure on that in the speaking part i'm talking about like you know so i thought that said i mean like, what i'm getting out of being nervous anyway like just a 7.5 you know so i thought like you know forget it like you know i'm not going to i'm not going to think about it it's not an exam so i literally went in there and i was talking to the examiner as if i've known him for 20 years or something <laughs> i literally did that i literally did that and that that is the best advice i can give to anybody who's not getting a score in the speaking part for sure mm-hmm. like you know don't be nervous it's not going to help just go there remain calm and do your best and yeah. solve and talk to the examiner as if he's your friend i mean like exactly that's what uh, I've I said that to you what 10 times 20 times on the course so that, that that's great that you did that. All right so th- those are all the questions that other students have. So what I think we'll do now is um we don't have a lot of time obviously so we'll go through each of the four skills and if you can give just some quick pieces of advice for yeah. let's say someone most of the students watching this need a 7 or above 
So yeah. if you were hoping for a seven or above in each of the skills, what would you do? So listening, what would you say for listening? The best advice is focus. In the exam, just focus. Like, forget about the surroundings. Everything. I was literally like, I don't know how to explain it, but be very focused, especially in the math questions, because you have to use more than one senses at that time, like, you know, hearing, listening, like, you know, just moving from one point to the next. And that was the part I was struggling with. So focus is the number one advice I can give you. Yeah. And for the people who are not, like, you know, used to listen to, like, English language most of the time maybe for them I would say like you know listen to just listen to documentaries there are, there's a lot of stuff on the net as well to help you with the listening part um, if you are obviously already in the UK you're all obviously surrounded with people like you know who already speak in English but if you are not then try and speak in English listen to English I don't know, watch movies and things mm. like that, maybe. And I, th I yeah. think for when you say focus, I think that's something that is a skill that needs to be developed. Yes. And yes. I was talking to another student who, did, who got eight or nine in listening, and they said it, it was very similar to meditation, that you need yeah. to build up uh, yeah. slowly the, the skill, yeah. the, the focus that you need to, for, to do that. So, I mean, ju just saying focus is, is some people will be like, well, how do I do that? That how you do that is slowly building up your practice and, and through listening. Yeah, I can add another advice as well, actually. I mean, I don't recommend this because this is like very risky, but I did it and it worked for me, but maybe it, like, but I don't recommend it. I just recommend you like listening very carefully. But if you can't, like, you know, if you just miss the point of something, let's say like, you know, there are six parts to a question and let's say you didn't quite get like you know the third part of something then what you do is like you listen and when you have listened just quickly write the important bit like you know if it was a map question that's how I improved on the maps mm -hmm. like you know that was the reason I got a 7.5 last time in the map mm -hmm. because I just couldn't follow the conversation I just lost focus so like you know like this time what I did was like you know I just wrote like the important bits like you know opposite the road or in the or like on the north side or something like that and I just quickly wrote it so when you have a minute you know just to check your answers instead of checking my answers I just quickly read it and then wrote the option correct and that's how I improved. Great so let's look at reading now and um, what would be some some advice that you would give to someone for reading? Reading, reading is I think it's more to do with like improving your vocabulary first of all because it just, it just easy, it's just easier when, like, you know, you know the words already and it's not something new. Uh, secondly, for the reading, of course, practice. Practice goes for every part anyway. But, uh, yeah, for reading, it's very essential. Uh, third and very important timing, okay, because I, well, I said it in one of my thing, but, yeah, I'll say it here as well. That, like, you know, don't divide your time equally. Like mm -hmm. the, because it says like you know you have 20 minutes for each passage don't mm -hmm. do that because the level difficulty level of each passage is different mm -hmm. so first one is the easiest and the third one is the most difficult mm -hmm. so obviously it makes sense to give more time to the third one rather mm -hmm. than the first one and because first two passages are easier relatively then you gotta like you know just get as many questions you can get like you know just get them correct in the first two and the third one is just a bonus so yeah, yeah this is my advice that's what i did that's yeah. great advice and did you do the uh, did you do it in order did you start yes, it i did it in order there? yes yes i did it in order mm. but uh, yeah i mean you can do any part first i mean like you can do the third passage first but if you're doing a difficult thing first it's just like you know maybe it's I, th I think it's better to do it in order to yes get i did it in order yeah the low hanging fruit first because yeah. What people, I've seen a lot of advice from other people that says do the hard part first, but then no. you're going to spend lots of time and your brain is just going to be like, oh my God, this is difficult. And then then the easier questions become more difficult because you're mentally drained and you don't have time. And, and yeah, things. and probably, you know, because you're not going to get many of them correct anyway in the third mm -hmm. one. So yeah, like, you know, third, you are just like, you know, your confidence. Is, yeah. yeah the, the third part is really for people... And a lot of the questions are to separate out the band seven, eight, and nine people. Yeah, so, you, so 
for realistically a lot yeah. of people who just need a seven or an eight are going to always get some questions in the in the last part wrong so yeah, uh, that true. is really good advice so speaking um you're obviously very good at speaking um but let, let put yourself in the shoes of someone who just needs a seven or a 7.5 or something like that what would be your advice we, you've already talked about yeah. talk to the examiner like you would talk to a friend and relax uh, anything course. else anything else yeah for sure um okay now because i've been studying in ukraine and obviously i didn't know the ukrainian language and the only way I learned it was to converse with people in that language. Um, so English is no different as well. It's the language at the end of the day. So if you want to learn it, like, you know, and be good at, like, you know, conversing. So you should talk to more people and try to talk to people in English anyway. Because what happens is, like, you know, when English is not your first language, at home you, you don't tend to speak in English, like, you know. But if I have to give an advice, it would be like, you know, a month before your exam or like, you know, if your level of English is really bad, then probably two months or something like, you know, just speak in English. Don't speak any other language. Mm -hmm. Like, just speak in English and that's the only way you can improve. And it's better to speak with somebody who's got a better level. I mean, because if you are like speaking with somebody who's at the same level as you, it's not going to help because they're at the same level as you and they can't tell you the, wrong, the, the mistakes or like, you know, whatever you are. So it's better to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I, I mean, English speak, like speaking is a skill. You have to practice that skill. Yeah, practice. I don't know how many students I've met who say that they want a band seven or a band eight. And then you say to them, well, how often do you speak? Like, <laughs> never. True. It's like, you know, it, it is <laughs> important true. to practice. Yeah, um, task two writing, what would be, a quick piece of advice for that. Oh, that's too is the most difficult. Um, okay, practice, practice as much as you can, <laughs> because that's what I did. Every day, I will write three essays. Wow. Okay, n now, <laughs> yeah, because um, and actually, I have to say, like you know, um, sometimes I would post the essays, and even though, like you know, you're only allowed to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So Michael would sometimes like, you know, just check it anyway. <laughs> and I was like, you <laughs> So yeah, um, practice a lot. At least write, okay, I'm not saying because most of the people work, like, you know, I was not working. So, um, and I had just finished my medical school. So it wasn't a problem for me, but at least write one piece of writing a day. It, it really helps. And I mean, in the group, we have the chance to like, you know, put two essays every week anyway so like you know it's more than more than enough for the people who are working mm -hmm. and that's the way you can improve and secondly i think um that's very important like you know once um you have done the five writings with you like you know once people have sent you the writings and like you know they get the feedback it's very important to like you know read through the whole feedback i know it's quite long but it's really helpful i mean that's what i used to do i would read through the feedback and then if i was struggling let's say if i was struggling with a particular part Let's say I was struggling with the grammar bit. Like, you know, I was struggling with the grammar bit, to be honest. I was struggling with articles. The thing is, like, I don't know, like, uh, when I speak naturally, like, like, I don't think, like, you know, there should be an, uh, or an, or, the, or, like, you know, I don't think, like, it just comes naturally, okay? But while I was writing, I was kind of struggling with it because according to the feedback you gave me, so, like, you know, I just went on the internet and, like, you know, I literally read through all the rules and after that, like, you know, I practiced a lot and I, I improved. So the whole point is like, you know, just whatever your area is, like, you know, that your, your weak area is, know that area and you will know because we get the feedback. It's like very detailed feedback that we get. So like, you know, after that, like, you know, just try and improve. And that's the only way you can improve in anything. Like, you know, just target the weak areas. And that's Excellent. what I did. That's how I improved. Excellent. And last but not least, uh, academic part one. Or task one. What oh, that's what I hate. But anyways, yeah, okay. Um, I think everything we need is in the course anyway uh, that you give us. Uh, but if but I have for, to give for it, peop for people who are not on my course, what what would okay. you what would you suggest? Okay, I'm not supposed to say that maybe, but like as I always say, like you know, it's very it, okay. Writing and speaking are two parts in the IELTS exam but you can't do well without getting professional help. I mean, it's not something that I'm just making up. It's, it's very true. 
like you know because you maybe you can you can improve your reading and listening just because you've got the keys and everything like you know but mm-hmm. uh, speaking and writing a class that you can't improve without professional help mm-hmm. that's what i personally believe and uh, for the people <laughs> i think it's better to get professional help that's yeah. that's true and guys i have to say this i'm not being brave chris told me not to say this but i don't know how else to answer this question so yeah i said i actually that. said before the video i said don't <laughs> use this as a marketing thing and yeah. don't just say i know it's not a marketing when i i haven't been bribed i'm not related to chris in any way i'm just a student but i really think that his help is really what you need yeah so i'll just say obviously we can't help you but what if you are struggling with writing i'm not saying join my course or anything but do yeah. get someone to help you so yeah. um like for example if you're in an english school find out who is the best ielts teacher in that school yeah. show them your work get feedback on it uh, or find someone to help you with it and it is really really going to help because it's a bit like if you for example if you had a problem with your car would you try and fix it yourself or would you take it to a professional and and get them to identify the problem so that's it so thank you very much sana that i think we're we're about to run out of time um what is what what is to have what are you going to do in the future with with this result or what what let's see well it, it was very very important for me i actually um i think my one of my one year is wasted because i didn't like you know clear miles and fine i didn't know there was a deadline actually that was my mistake but yeah um i'm going to prepare for my medical exams and after that i'll have a year because one year is wasted anyway i know one year is going to go in preparation for exams mm-hmm. but after that i think it's valid for two years so i should quickly prepare my medical exams before it runs out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great, Sana. Thank you very much for you so sharing much, your advice with people. Um, it, it'll be really useful for a lot Thank of students. Thank you so much. And uh, best of luck in your future. Okay, Sana. Thank you for being an amazing teacher. Thank you're you. You're welcome. Thanks, you're welcome. Bye bye.